We're going to solve a reactor optimization problem with Python Gecko. The very first thing you'll need to do with Python Gecko is install it. You can get the latest version instructions on how to do that here from Read the Docs. And the very first thing you need to do is just pip install Gecko. So if you open up a command prompt, I'll do pip install Gecko. And then I'll have the package installed. Next, I'll need to look at the optimization problem. We'll set it up and solve it in Python. One of the unique things about this is we have uh, just a little bit more complex objective function. This is actually going to be equal to our species three. So we're going to have x1, x2, and x3 inside a reactor. And we have our first reaction, which is going to be uh, reversible. So we have one is going to go to two, and then you have an irreversible reaction going to three. This is just kind of generalized as a benchmark example problem, but it could be it could be applied to much more complex reactors as well. So we have our disappearance of species X, you know, X one, and we have our uh, reverse reaction which is right here, that's our reaction going backwards. And then we have our reaction going forwards, which is U times X1. Now you'll see that same term down here, but with the negative sign, same reversible reaction. And then we have our third reaction here, which is going to X3, and that's this one right here, the disappearance of X2 as it forms X3. We also have another initial condition here. This is our x1 and x2 initial condition, and that's at time zero. So x1 is gonna start off at one and it'll drop. x2 is going to increase, and then x3 will also increase as well. Just put dotted line there. We'll show how to uh, put in the x3 value as well. Our U value is constrained between zero and one. It could be like a temperature, a flow rate, you know, something like that. And we're gonna go out to a final time of 12. So to set up and solve this in Gecko, here are the commands. You'd first of all need to just import some packages. Define your new model right there. I'll zoom in just a little bit as we go through it. Here are our time points. These are gonna be delta T equals 0.01. I've set up my manipulated variable, that's my u value, and I have an upper bound of one, a lower bound of zero, and I just gave it an initial guess of one. You can put an initial value of whatever you'd like. This tells to turn on this, uh, that parameter to be able to be optimized, and then also I put the d cost, the delta cost, for moving that parameter to zero. By default, I believe it's like one times 10 to the minus fifth, so it shouldn't affect it that much, but just eliminate that. Here's some variables with my initial conditions there, one and zero. And then I also set up my final parameter here. So it's zero everywhere. And just at the end, it's equal to one. And that's just so I can optimize these just at the final point. Here are my equations right here, differential equations. Here you'll see you know, the dx1 dt. And then you just put in your right-hand side of the equation right here. Now here's my objective function. We are trying to, uh, you know, in this case, it's actually maximizing the value of x3. Um, so I have one minus x1 minus x2. And so that's gonna be the concentration of x3. And we're just multiplying it by that final parameter. So I only wanna optimize x3 at the very end. And I put in the negative sign to convert the maximization into a minimization. If you multiply by negative one, it converts it for you. This means dynamic optimization for I mode equals six, and then I solve it. Now here's my objective right there, and then I'm just gonna plot the X1 and X2. I'll show you how to add X3 as well, if you'd like to do that. There's my U value as well, and then I'll show the plot. So let's go and run this, and then we'll modify it a little bit just to add 
x3 in there. Okay, when I run it with Python 3.6, it's going to optimize it, and there you'll see the values of u and x1 and x2. But let's say we want to add x3 in there as well, because that's really the one that we're trying to optimize. So I can do it a couple different ways. One is to just add this here, and then add x3. Okay, let's change the color of this as well, maybe to a black um, dashed line. And then I'll have 1 minus x1.value minus x2.value. Let's run this one more time. Ask me if I want to save it. Click OK. OK, so it says I can't, uh, I can't do this. I'm going to have to go in and you know, I'll show you another way to do it. I was trying to just put 1 minus the values. Um, you know, we're going to have to actually go in and change this. OK, I can either add it as a variable or I can loop through it instead of just do it all in one place. So let's do it the other way, which is x3.value. And then I'm just going to add a new equation. OK, and this one's going to be x3. Uh, I'll just do this. 1 equals uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3. OK, and then add another variable, which is x3. And down here, I'm just going to put in x3. OK, so just add that additional one, and then we'll just be able to plot x3 right here. And then I can also do x3 negative 1. I should get the same answer as I did before. OK, let's go ahead and just um, optimize this again. OK, so here we have the value of x3 that's shown. It's a black dashed line, and there it maximizes the value. We've got the same u value as before. Uh, the difference is that we really you know, just kind of simplified the objective expression. Um, we just added a new equation, and we added that new variable as well. OK, so that's it for this benchmark problem. Uh, we optimized a reactor with three different species, one reversible reaction and one irreversible reaction. This can be applied to much larger systems as well, you know, uh, those with hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of equations. But just this shows a simple problem for reactor optimization with just a couple variables.